How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week 14, and your 11 and 1 Eastern Michigan Eagles are sitting at number one in the country. We've risen to the top of the mountain, uh, but things aren't completely over. We do have two bye weeks here to end the season before our conference championship game, which, uh, you know, when you go undefeated in conference, you tend to make it to your conference championship game. So, We've got some recruiting to do, and then we'll just go ahead and sim through these couple of weeks and get to the conference championship game in this episode. Our recruiting should be fairly straightforward. We're just kind of fighting for some players. At this point, 87 overall tight end, Drew Allen. I think he's the number one tight end. No, the number two tight end in the nation uh, is our biggest fight that we care about. We are down 900 points to Oregon. I think we started giving him points a little bit late in the season, but uh, we're gaining... 45 a week maybe more uh they had their visit pretty late so as long as we don't somehow get uh screwed over like we did with christian grimmel we should be in a good spot there and then with everybody else it's kind of just holding on so Taj or jonathan westercamp we can actually take his points off uh anybody above i would say 85 percent we don't need to give them points if we're in the lead because uh I mean, nobody's going to swoop in and take it, and it'll allow us to give points to other good players. So we'll just go ahead and do that. We're just going best available at this point, um, hoping that we can get something good. That leaves us 200, and of these guys, uh, we are, we're not even on the board for Marcus Bryant or uh, Santrell Sullivan. So we'll give them points, but I have no idea what it's going to do. I would say maybe it's a little bit late in the season to be giving points to a guy who's 17% locked, but we'll see what that does. Uh, also, we have some visits that we can schedule for guys. Send them this week on the bye. Just try to get them all maxed out with points as quick as possible. We get a couple of complimentary visits there as well. So who knows? Maybe we can get uh, a commit from that this week. We'll take a quick look at the top 25 polls to see any big games. Um, we've got number six, Georgia Tech playing at number 17, Georgia. We've got number eight, Auburn, who just lost their first game in overtime to LSU. They're playing at number 24, Alabama at home. That's a big iron bowl with Ohio State and Michigan. It's the number 10 versus the number 13 team in the country. So uh, a pretty big deal for the rivalry. That one, I don't know how much it's going to matter. It could just be for who gets an at-large bet into the playoff. Ohio State with three losses, Michigan with two uh, Ohio State might already be knocked out for all we know. A lot of teams with bye weeks, and then the rest of them are all playing against uh, non-ranked opponents. And the ones that uh, we want to lose the most, the Texas Longhorns. I wouldn't mind playing against these guys in like the national championship just to dash their dreams uh, as they did steal again Christian Grimmel. I will not get over that. I refuse their one loss to uh, uh, number 10, 8 and 2 Oklahoma in overtime. So they have to play West Virginia and then Texas Tech. Don't seem like difficult opponents, but it is Texas. So you never know. They could easily lose one of these two games. And RJ Rivera is still atop the Heisman uh, board, the Heisman watch list. I think that's a miracle. Uh, all of a sudden, a few weeks ago, we didn't have any finalists for awards that like looked like they were going to do well. And all of a sudden, the past couple weeks, I guess we just dominated enough. We got their stats high enough that uh, the college football world has taken notice. So we'll sim to this week 15, see if we get any commits, and we'll see if there's any chaos. And no commits, but good visits for a lot of guys. Still in those recruiting battles with everybody else. We get, oh, that extra XP for being ranked number one is so huge in helping us continue to level up. Nearing the halfway point on this level is massive. Um... Let's take a look at the top 25, see if anybody dropped down, if anybody took losses. I see Texas got jumped by Syracuse in the college football playoff poll. We knew that they were there in like the AP poll or one of them. Uh, the uh, coaches poll has Texas, but uh, the playoff poll is the one that matters most. So Texas does get the win. Anybody losing? Georgia Tech loses to Georgia, who jumps up to number nine. Uh, USC loses to an unranked Notre Dame, so they take their second loss. That'll drop them down. There is a lot of three loss and two loss teams in the top 25 this year. Auburn lost to Alabama 45 to three. The Tigers at 90 overall were 10 and 0, and then they dropped the last two games, one in overtime, and then I guess just the big letdown after losing to LSU. They lose the Iron Bowl, they get blown out in the Iron Bowl. It's not even close. Bama rolls, and uh, they only allow a field goal against the previous number one team. That is insane to me. 
Coastal gets a win against BYU. Bama jumps up to number 17 in the playoff poll as Michigan loses to Ohio State. Uh, Oklahoma loses their third of the season to TCU. And there's no dropping out or anything in the playoff poll, I guess. But, uh, man, that is just, that's crazy to me. With Drew Allen, our tight end, we jump up 145 points. So I guess uh, Oregon can't put a full 700 into him for whatever reason. Jonathan Westerkamp didn't commit this last week because Arizona State unlocked the door and had a visit. Uh, that's a problem. <laughs> so we're going to have to find 700 points there. 99% locked. If we would have given him the 700, I think maybe we get him committed last week. But it is what it is. So we won't fully take the points away from Taj McPherson. We'll just take... Uh, 600 away from him give him 100 just in case something insane happens and did we do that with anybody else we can take 100 away from quay foreman um that'll give us the full 700 towards wester camp and then everybody else uh just kind of sitting there we'll split uh Caden crawley's points with pj uzoma just to make sure that he commits what is that 350 is half of 700 the quick maths coming out here in force that was a real struggle to get down to that number. Everybody else just uh, continuing to try and build some points. And we do show up at the bottom of a couple of these guys' boards, but I think it's a little bit too late. Two of them ready for visits. That is Robert Summers and Jared Wright. So this could help us quite a bit in picking up the last few pieces. Uh, you love to see that. Complimentary visits for the athletes as well. And just like that, we can sim through towards conference championship week and we'll see who it is that makes it to their respective conference championship games, or uh, if they don't have a conference championship game, who won their conference outright. Okay, Tashi McPherson and Caden Crawley commit. So that's a 77 overall running back and a 75 overall wide receiver. Um, still in recruiting battles with everybody else, and Dane Clemens Valde commits to Clemson. What? Were we not, like, massively in the lead there? I... Uh, I'm so confused by the recruiting this season. It does not make any sense to me. They shoot out of nowhere, and somehow, uh, maybe we weren't really fighting there. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but uh, that's insane. Almost, are still in a recruiting battle with Jonathan Westerkamp. Almost locked in with Quay Foreman and Drew Allen, 635 points behind. And uh, I didn't see who we scheduled to play against Nebraska. So the Cornhuskers at number 12, nine and three, win the other division in the Big 10. And uh, they are the better team, but we beat them. I wanna say that we beat them this year. Maybe we didn't. Uh, there is no Nebraska on the schedule. So a team that we haven't had to face off against, but we've certainly played some really difficult opponents. Uh, Auburn, Clemson, Michigan, Ohio State all ranked. And there were more teams, UCF, uh, Minnesota, and Iowa were ranked when we played them. I think Penn State might've been as well. So. We definitely have had our opportunities to play good teams, and we've won all but one of them, so we're in an interesting spot. Anybody lose on that last week? Most teams had buys. Texas won, Cincinnati won, and Oklahoma State won, and so did Iowa State. But for the most part, everybody had buys on that kind of weird week 15. So what happened with conferences? Uh, actually, first, let's take a look at scores and schedules. That way we can just see the conference championship games and see who's playing what. Uh, as we've got us in the Big Ten, Bowling Green at Rutgers in the MAC, Western Kentucky at UTEP in the Conference USA. The SEC is Georgia at Auburn, Boise State at Fresno State for the Mountain West, Georgia Tech at Syracuse for the ACC, and Stanford at USC for the Pac-12. Both Stanford and USC, I, not too long ago, they were they were ranked two and three in the nation. So, uh, disappointing ends to the seasons for both of those teams. Uh, if USC wins it, they might backdoor themselves into the playoff with an at-large spot. Or I guess if they do win it, the winner of all the Power 5 teams or all the Power 5 games instantly gets into the conference or into the playoffs. Having a hard time speaking right now, but uh, you guys get the point. So <laughs> any of the Power 5 winners, if they win, they're in. Uh, so that includes us and Nebraska. If Nebraska wins, still a good chance that we make it as an at-large bit, though. In the American, Cincinnati at number five in the nation wins the conference. They will likely make it to the playoffs. And in the Big 12, it is Texas winning uh, eight and one in conference, 11 and one in their overall. They're sitting at number two. So we will likely see them as the two seed. Our two independents finish at seven and five and five and seven. Army 
was ranked for most of this season, but just lost too much at the end. And BYU, I think, actually kind of had a little bit of a surge near the end of the season, but not enough for a winning one. And in the Sun Belt, uh, a tie. But I think that tie goes to Georgia Southern over Louisiana Lafayette, both 7-1 and in conference. I guess we can see. I'm just assuming at the top, ULL. Yep, so Georgia Southern at number 14 in the country. It's going to be on the outside looking in on the playoffs. I don't think that they could have afforded a loss in the Sun Belt, but uh, unfortunately that's the case. So they'll go to a good bowl game, but they will not be making the 18 playoff. So that will leave us with this game against Nebraska. Uh, fighting for it all. It, I think we'll play at Lucas Oil Stadium, right? Nebraska, uh, the better offense, but we have the better defense. Man, their defense, though, plus nine in the turnover differential compared to our minus two. So we got to be careful uh, with the football. We can't be throwing it away. Smart decisions. Make sure that we're not throwing too uh, often or early with more East State. We should stand a good chance. It's an 84 overall for Nebraska with an 88 offense and an 80 defense. So I guess that's kind of tracks as to why their offense is so much better. And for the Cornhuskers, we could put them in the black shirts, but uh, I'm kind of thinking black shirts away. I don't know. We got to have them in some sort of uh, school colors. So it's going to be, well, we can go red versus green. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll go with their alternate one uh, against one of our home uniforms here. And it's an interesting look for us, for sure, with the white helmet. Uh, does it look better with the silver helmet? Yeah, it does. The white helmet's a little bit too weird. So that's what it's going to look like for this game. Number one versus number 12 for the Big Ten Championship. And coming in, again, their offense doing really well. Their defense actually isn't all that bad, uh, statistically. They are 13th in points, 12th in yards gains, and then top 30-ish in passing yards and rushing yards, a very balanced attack with their defense uh, kind of middle of the road or, you know, the upper middle end uh, on every category. For us, we don't get a whole lot of yards, but we score the most points in the nation at 40.2. Uh, that's due to our special teams and our defense uh, kind of taking away opportunities to score, giving us really short fields. So we don't have to get a lot of yards to get into the end zone, but we do get into the end zone quite a bit. And our defense, first in points allowed, first in yards allowed, first in rushing yards allowed, and just 34th in passing yards allowed. But uh, I don't know. I mean, you, uh, you would think this should be a blowout for us. Nebraska only 84 overall. It seems like uh, nobody in the Big Ten really has a dominant team, but that's just the way it goes is we're looking at uh, a group of players that has had to spend a couple of weeks on the bench, so hopefully no longer on hot streaks, we're able to come out and play to our fullest potential. Nebraska's top players, an 88 overall wide receiver, an injured 83 overall right guard, and then an 82 overall corner. So uh, they're very balanced. They don't, they're not very top heavy on their roster, but the injury to that right guard, the broken femur, is definitely devastating for their offensive line. At the end though, like I said, as long as we take care of the football, I'm feeling pretty confident about this game. So here we are at Lucas Oil Stadium for this Big Ten Championship matchup. Very excited to see if uh, Nebraska can actually do anything to stop us because teams have struggled. They are the higher overall team as they win the toss and will elect to kick this one off. And as they kick it to RJ Rivera, First, they got to be worried, but second, uh, I've already decided I'm not going to try to spoil too much, but a minor spoiler as RJ is off to the races. We're going to make next year's schedule the most difficult in college football, maybe ever. So if you're like me and you think this season was maybe a little bit too easy, even with Seagators sliders, we're going to change things up. RJ Rivera just returned the opening kickoff inside the opponent's 30 as uh, they really played that read option well. It gives us a loss of three as we will try a little RPO. No, handing it off to Bentley. I just, I don't feel confident throwing those a lot of the times because you have almost like no time to react. Unfortunately, because of that bad first down, we're now in a third and seven with a quarterback who can't throw an accurate pass. So we'll see what it is that uh, RJ in the offensive line can do on a slip screen. Literally nobody's open. And they are playing this really well. I'm going to scramble with Maurice Tate. This is the, <laughs> the weirdest slip screen I've ever run. They were in QB contained the whole time. I just don't know if we could have completed that. Well, fourth and six. I'm not going to kick a field goal in this situation. 
Uh, I will. Well, we motioned Rutger. I want most Rutger back because I want Brian Curtis over here. Extra blocker on this counter. Try and open up some space. This is a big fourth down early in the Big Ten Championship game. And the blocking almost was enough. Brian Curtis absolutely, like, locked his man down, but there just wasn't enough space there. So Nebraska comes out with a stop on their first drive. And now it's a first down at the 20. They've got quite a bit to work with. It's triple option. They get the pitch out. Chris Whitaker misses the diving tackle. Moore can't get it. Logan's going to have to shove Jacob Smith out of bounds. Not before he gets 12. And this is kind of the uh, defense that I expected to see from Nebraska, or the offense, sorry, that I expected to see from Nebraska. Just uh, a heavy run team is what I expected. Is Oh my gosh, she just bounced off the tackler, breaks another one. And Aaron Finley's got 14. I felt like we played that pretty well, but it's us getting toasted. And they are almost at midfield. They bring a, a wide receiver in motion, hand it off. They get three yards. That's our best stop yet. What if we bring Napoleon Sandcastle on the blitz? See what he can do to shut this one down. Second and seven. It's a handoff up the middle, and it's more broken tackles. They just got four yards, no problem. Just very much liable to get burned on this. As this is going to be an option out towards the edge. Quarterback. Oh, my gosh. I thought he was going to pitch it, so I went out to stop that, but he held on to it and almost got the first down. It's the punt team out, but with inches to go. We are in the safe man, not trusting these guys one bit. Kind of expecting a fake. And no, oh, they will boot this one away. So nobody back to protect. RJ can just let it bounce into the end zone. Thankfully, 0-0. Zero, zero. This uh, early defensive battle that I didn't expect to have. So we will continue to try and get Maurice Tate ready to pass. And that includes just a dump off to RJ Rivera who can break a tackle and get us some positive yards. That was absolutely fantastic. Great first down for us. Just getting the completion as we're going to go back to the counter. And RJ just uh, didn't quite have anywhere to go. Running into blockers, losing all his momentum. Still going forwards, though. I think this one might be a little bit uncomfortable. Third and three. Not necessarily certain we can pass here. Not certain it's four down territory. But, oh my gosh, it's completed to the running back. Out of the backfield for five. So we're able to move the chains with that one. And we're going to give it back to Derek Bentley. Uh, anytime he catches something like that, it's big. And oh my gosh, 55 unblocked into the backfield for a loss of two. I don't know if there was anything RJ could have done to block that. Uh, nowhere to go, really. Second and 12 will try a read option. RJ's going to get the handoff, but they're covering it really well. Nebraska's defense showing up early in this one. Question, of course, for them is will they be able to keep it up throughout the game? And uh, we're going to try something a little bit interesting here. Another counter. It didn't really work the last time we ran it, but we're going to try it again here because it's still four down territory in my eyes, and there is no blocking, and we're going to lose three yards. I have to punt this one away. We'll see if we can kind of cough and corner them on this one, but, uh, man, after the first drive, it just didn't feel like the defense was going to be able to do enough. I'm just going to let that roll down inside the 25. Not great. I feel like maybe that sentence I said didn't make any sense, but uh, essentially <laughs> we didn't stop them very easily on offense on the many plays that they had. So I'd rather force them back and give our defense a bit of a chance as he gets the pitch off and the broken tackles. These are some corn fed boys just shoving us off right now. First quarter almost to a close. Four carries for 20 yards for the running back as it's second 11. This feels like it could be another option. Plenty of space. He's getting the stiff arm cheese. He's breaking the tackle. Oh my goodness. Not only are they breaking the tackles, they're just running really smart as well. Uh, I left my man open. I don't know if I can get there in time. I don't know if it matters because I'm not the only one getting beat as Jacob Smith gets pushed out of bounds, picking up 18 yards to end our first quarter. It's all knotted up at zero, but I don't know what we're going to be able to do. These guys are playing really, really well. Something's going to have to happen in the tackling department. Defense needs to figure it out in a real hurry before they get into the end zone. That was just the first pass of the day for Nebraska, and I can expect them probably to come out and continue to run the football. No, it's a play action. We could be caught out on this one. Coverage okay on the quarterback all the time in the world. Logan, he was sat there for about 10 minutes, eventually decides to go in and get the sack. If I'm being honest, uh, 
I'm surprised that we were able to get that tackle the way that we've been playing. Second and 17. I am expecting them to run the football, but okay. Uh, we did an actual good job of stopping it. That's going to give us a third and 17. We'll try a little bit of zone with the cover six. Try and defend something. And the quarterback, no time. He was going to have guys coming open, but he takes a sack. We pushed him back pretty well there. And the defensive battle continues as this one's fourth and 24. Oh, man. I was worried that they were going to do something big on that return, but just uh, or on that drive. Didn't quite accumulate the yards, though. And now RJ trying to do something. Can't quite get the corner. Oh, that was dangerous for Nebraska. Well, what can we do on this drive? Read option, trying to get the offense moving early. RJ, not quite the blocking, the spin move though. Oh, it's so strong, but this is coming back. Almost guaranteed a flag down, it's a holding. Oh, that hurts. In general, I want to say that our offense is playing better, but I don't know, shooting ourselves in the foot with plays like that certainly doesn't help, and our offensive line can't seem to get a push. Now, I will go ahead and take the blame on that run. That was a bad user for me, but you still got to expect a little bit more. Trying the jet sweep, something might work. Brian Curtis just happens to find the space. Third and two. This could be a, a good chance if we can get across midfield. Curious how foolish the decision not to kick the field goal on that opening drive will look if we don't end up winning this game or if it's a, you know, something a field goal could have won for us. Third and two, the running... Just barely successful. Sneaking over that line to gain. Derek Bentley in the backfield, but we're going with a little mid screen to Jeff Fontenot, who actually gets free, but we missed him. Oh, that was at least five yards minimum. Oh, we are not going to be looking too good if we have to rely on the running game all game long. Maurice State just hasn't shown the capabilities. They're able to bring the safety up, and I can't punish them. And Derek Bentley on the counter gets dropped for a loss of four. Just ran right into the butt of his lineman. Maurice Tate can't pass downfield yet, so we have to go with another slip screen. This one could be good, though. RJ doesn't quite get the blocking. Fourth and five. Oh, we're going to go for this. I know for certain that we are not in field goal range, and there's no reason for me to punt it across the 50. So with Derek Bentley in, we'll see what we can do on a speed option. Bentley gets taken out of the play, and Maurice State has nowhere to go. Three uh, Cornhuskers just obliterated him. <laughs> that one looked like it hurt a lot. 54 total yards for the Cornhuskers to our 37. I'm expecting passing on this drive. We'll see if we can get Smith in to get another sack on the season. They're throwing it deep. Overthrown, though, thankfully. Andrew Passick, Patrick incomplete on his second attempt of the day. Reason we know they're passing is just the time crunch in the rest of this half. 2.30 to go. Makes me feel relatively confident as they're going to go with a little sweep of their own. And the tackles are continuing to be broken. Jacob Smith gets 13. They've had maybe a little bit too much success running the football against the number one rush defense in the nation. Coming out really to play. I'm impressed with Nebraska right now. It's just, I mean, really, it's on us, you know, not being able to stop the run, not being able to get our tackles, I guess. This is a slip screen. Smith actually gets him in the backfield. Third and 10. That might have pushed him out of field goal range, too. I'm going to be very curious to see what we can do in the pressure here. I didn't mean to be using Sims. This one's thrown. Whitaker drops the pick. Oh, he underthrew that route. I think his man could have been open. Pump block once again for Nebraska. They aren't afraid to punt it from their side of the 50. Uh, we are also in the safe man because I just don't trust these guys. And this one's going to land in the end zone for a touchback. So a minute and 36 with an offense that can't move the football. But all three of our timeouts. Let's we'll see what we can do here. 80 yards to find the end zone. We don't need to get 80, though. Anything that gets us in the vicinity of a field goal is fine with me. We're just going to throw this one to Stone. Get, take our check down, get out of bounds, and get six yards. Question's going to be, can we throw downfield? Five pass attempts. Four more East Tate. He's got a few completions. I hit the wrong button. Oh, I meant to hit right bumper and I hit A. RJ was wide open over the middle. Well, that's a third and four. It was an accurate pass, but uh, maybe not enough. They're bringing pressure. Can we get outside here? We're going to use or uh, have Curtis block for us. Just got to dump it off. Rivera gets the first down a little bit more. Time to go in the hurry up with a minute and 23 left. 
We'll see if they want to bring that pressure on this one because we're looking deep. They are rushing a few guys. A is kind of open. If they don't play it well, Brian Curtis comes down with it on the run. The stiff arm cheese inside the five and down to the four. There's a flag down though. Oh, is this coming back? Okay, it's a clipping, but we should still be down because that was like right at the end of the play. First and 10 at the 28 is okay. I gotta say that's a stupid mistake from Jody Gentry though. That may be enough to take a touchdown off the board for us. Let's hope that's not the case. A, not open, I threw it anyways, but he comes open. Stone inside the five, down to the one, and we can let the clock burn a little bit here. Oh, that was clutch. Inside the one, in fact, as uh, we are going to hand this one off to RJ Rivera. I don't necessarily feel confident with that, but that's what we're going to do anyways. As we'll let, uh, we'll let this clock burn down to 50 before we snap it. Kneel in motion. Just try to jam up the middle of the line, and RJ didn't get there. In fact, they say we lost a yard. Well, we've still got all our timeouts, so I'm not worried about the clock. We're just going to continue to run it up the middle. Gap doesn't look like it's going to be a problem. And yeah, RJ gets in. When they come out not jamming up the line, uh, it doesn't matter what play we run. We can get a yard in X amount of attempts. So we're fine. We finally get on the board. First points, and it's 20 seconds left in the half. 7 nothing in an absolute defensive battle. Uh, how important it is, is it to score? Especially they get the ball to start the third quarter. If we gave them the chance to take the first lead, we would definitely be in a lot of trouble. There's 16 seconds here on the clock. Uh, this is going to be a run on first down. They might take the timeout. If they break any tackles, you know what? We're going to take some timeouts. I want to force them to make a mistake here. We know that they're going to be running on all these plays, so why not just bring as much pressure as we can and maybe force them into some sort of mistake, force them to punt it away even. 10 seconds left here. And it is going to be a run called. Can we get the tackle? We bring him down with six seconds. We're going to force him to punt it to RJ Rivera. We don't get to take our timeouts into the locker room with us. So we might as well give ourselves one more chance, one more threat at a touchdown. We've seen him do it so many times. We know they have a lot of speedsters on the team, though. And RJ, well, I guess it's just a little bit of stat padding for him as he gets 13 yards on the return. Blocking wasn't quite good enough there, and it's a 7 nothing lead at the half here. Um, gosh, what is it? Maybe a total of 200 yards combined for both teams. It has not looked good. Definitely been difficult. Um, defense has not tackled well. They did well on the last drive, but just in general, way too many broken tackles. Way too many plays in the double digits for yards for Nebraska. And I think the offense is starting to get a groove. Maurice can seem to throw downfield. So as long as we can be scoring points, we don't really need the defense to get stops, but uh, I think we're in a good spot. Let's see if we can actually be a second-half team for once. As Clark gets this second half underway, I'd like to ask you guys to hit the like button if you have enjoyed this season, the beatdown that we've put on teams, the struggles that we've had at times. It's been interesting. Two more quarters until we are potentially in the playoffs. I will say, sitting at number one, if we lose to Nebraska, we know that they get in, but it's a loss to the number 12 team in the country. I would feel a little bit confident that we could get an at-large bid. Oh my gosh, a huge run. The tackle's still being broken. He's still on his feet. He cannot be brought down. Napoleon finally gets him. The Frenchman having to do everything. He had a convoy and then some. Well, I was thinking maybe there was a chance at a shutout still, but after that one, first and goal, one play for Nebraska. The defense, man, he broke like 10 tackles. Whitaker gets in there and gets the sack. That is so, so huge. I'm really curious to know how good uh, their kicker is because I want to keep bringing pressure on this one. On this second and goal, it looks like it's going to be a handoff out towards the edge. That's going to lose him another yard. I was really hoping they were going to pass that because I wanted to get Smith in there to just kind of dominate them. But here we are, third and goal. They're going to step back, looking to throw. We need a turnover in. Oh, oh. The man almost made a one-handed catch. Lewis somehow doesn't get in there to break it up, but it is fourth and goal. Pure at luck uh, that they, they don't hold on to that one. They're going to try the field goal on this. I'm going to try to block it. Oh, that was the jump. We miss it. Kicker looks like he's got more than enough of a leg. 
for uh, a really long field goal. So that's really good to know. Seven to three, still a defensive battle, but uh, we now have the upper hands. If we can open up this lead, uh, make it two scores, that would be massive. Another touchdown is almost a must for me as RJ Rivera off to the race as a man missing the tackle. RJ gets pushed out of bounds, but he gets across midfield. Well, I'm going to come out and test Maurice early. From the opponent's 48 and a half yard line, a play action, stepping back. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> B was coming open, but with that many red jerseys in our face, we would be stupid not to throw that ball away. We'll try to just get something here on this second down with a run. And the offensive line actually getting a solid hold there as we're able to get seven yards. RJ puts it at a third and three as we almost got to the 40-yard line, and we will step back. Looking to pass on this one. This could be picked off. No, Jeff Fontenot gets free and gets the catch for 16 yards. Murray State actually 7 to 10 through the air today, which is surprisingly impressive uh, for how it feels like this game is gone. RJ just got cracked in the ribs. I would be surprised if he got up quickly from that one. Nine carries for 32 yards and a touchdown for him. Uh, he's going to get a little bit of a breather from injury or otherwise. Maybe he's just tired. Derek Bentley up the middle, second in inches, just running straight. Drop the shoulders, get us a first down at the 11-yard line. And uh, Lionel Goodwin, let's get him involved. Bentley out in motion. We're going to try another screen play. Goodwin. Oh, my gosh, what a move. Lionel goes 10 yards, spinning past the safety, embarrassing that man. Avoiding the tackle from the D lineman. And it's going to be an 11 point game. Oh man. It really is with this team. Just once they get into a rhythm. If, if we get stopped early. Uh, teams can cause some problems for us. But once we get going. The momentum is just too much to slow down. Truly just a runaway freight train. In football team form. First and 10. They're going to run. I kind of expected a counter. But uh, well, we only gave up three yards. We'll be curious to see if we can actually start to tackle. Maybe their running backs will get a little bit tired. This one going to be an option out to the side, or maybe that was just a sweep, but again, holding it to three is a million times better than the other attempts to stop that play. As on this third and four, it's going to be a slip screen. Can we get there with Logan? This is important. Get the stiff arm cheese, but he just get him down at the line of scrimmage. And this one may have just turned completely sour for Nebraska. Their offense, which was moving the ball decently well, has been shut down almost even in terms of total yards of offense, but it looks like we are about to start to dwarf whatever numbers they have gotten as we will get another punt return for RJ and just trying to switch the direction of the field. I don't know, maybe try to catch him off guard. We get 16 yards out of it. And uh, just looking, Chris Rutger is cold, but we're looking for Verts. I want a chance just to burn them on one. Chris Rutger, oh, the corner noticed, and he almost came away with it. Ooh, I needed to throw the bullet pass there, but, uh, well, I didn't do that. And this is the mistake that I continue to make all season long. We're going to try to run the dang flea flickers, second and 10 in the Big Ten championship game. Plenty of time. It's going to be picked off. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So we finally get a decent chance to run the dang play, and I just throw the opportunity away. Now it's third and ten. We'll have to pass, stepping back, trying to sit in the pocket, but it just breaks down. Why? B is wide open. Jody Gentry, no problem there. How about a little halfback swing screen? See what we can do, giving the ball to Rivera. No blocking. No blocking necessary. I didn't mean to spin the second time. I think that actually kind of hurt us, but we got seven yards. Not certain if there's anybody more dangerous in college football with the spin move than RJ. Dude, just like, he looks like a dang Beyblade. Bay blade. Uh, would have been a cool line if I said it properly. Again, outside the pocket, Maurice was coming open, but they covered that really well. And they're containing the scramble pretty well. I've definitely been able to get outside the pocket, but I haven't been able to take off and run. So uh, the defense for Nebraska continues to be pretty stellar. RJ off tackle gets inside. And gets us another first down. I will be curious to see if anybody can get open on this play action. This is probably picked off Jody Gentry in the back of the end zone. You know, the problem with our receivers is they're just a little bit too short. 
I had other options available there. I just, I kind of decided that's what I was going to throw before the play was snapped, and uh, I stuck with it as somehow RJ just keeps moving the legs and pinballs his way forward for five. It just feels like every time I throw up one of those 50-50 balls, it's against a team with really tall defensive backs. As we went with the mid-screen, I threw it maybe a little bit too early. Jeff was going to break a tackle, but the second defender showed up. And now on fourth and five, I said I would kick myself for not kicking the field goal earlier. We're going to try it again. RJ Rivera on a counter. The blocking good enough for him to not get there. Oh, I called it too early. Didn't quite have the speed to get north for the first down. And with one second remaining in the third quarter, it is going to be Nebraska's chance to try and make this one more manageable. We hit him in the backfield. They're going to lose a yard. Safety, I don't know, it could be on the table if we get some big plays here. But at the end of three, 14 to three. One quarter to play before we make the playoffs as the number one seed. I feel confident. I just don't see Nebraska scoring more than once in this quarter. So just have to get it done. Curious if these guys decide to start passing more. That's what I would expect to see as... Uh, second 11, it's going to be an option. Quarterback's able to get rid of it. The blocking was pretty good. Napoleon just missed. And that's a huge 19-yard carry. Their option game has been very strong this game. The quarterback is having to pay for it with his body. Just absolutely getting popped time again. Uh, somebody's going to be open. He's throwing it deep. Royal got burned. Tried to ball hockey, but again, we're just a very short team. Well, I hope this isn't uh, Nebraska coming to... You know, show me up. I said I didn't see him scoring twice. They're about to score within the first, like, 30 seconds of this half. This one's going to be a handoff. Lewis can't get the tackle. It's a first and goal. No safeties. Bringing the pressure. Seeing what we can do. They're going to step back to pass. Quarterback scrambling. We hit him. That's a face mask, but they did not call it. Huge sack to force the second and goal outside the 10. The wind got knocked out of London, so that's why we've got Lewis and Logan. Man, all our linebackers have L last names. That's a little bit interesting. This one's going to be a run. Valentine with a beautiful swim move to fill the gap and take down Alvin. So it'll be a third and goal. What can we do to stop what's likely going to be a pass play? They step back looking for it. Somebody's going to be open and nowhere to go. Andrew Patrick just getting blitzed in the backfield takes a big sack. I don't necessarily disagree with this, but the field goal formation out for Nebraska. We'll see what they can do. Kick is no good. Doinked it off the outside of the post. Oh, that was their only chance to win. Unless we have a disastrous turnover, that's got to be it. That would have made it an eight-point game. One score is manageable. I still don't think that two is, as Maurice is going to keep it. And, oh, man. Oh, I don't like the hit that he just took. Kind of got crumpled. Well, I'm definitely not going to be risk averse here because I want another touchdown for safety as we're going to pitch it super late to RJ Rivera. He gets the guy to break the tackle. I was just trying to bring him in so that he would get blocked. That might have been a touchdown if I just let RJ use his speed to his advantage. A super late pitch from Maurice Tate. He put his body on the line, but that was worth it. Well, there was a player injured on that play. I'm not sure who it was. I think it might have been whoever hit Maurice State in the backfield. He looked slow to get up on that replay. But on second and seven, we are nearly midway through this final quarter of play. Derek Bentley's going to start to get the majority of the handoffs, and Derek Bentley's got some beautiful blocking. Let's just continue to hand this football off. The offensive line really getting a push at this stage in the game is absolutely beautiful exactly what we need second in six still running the football this one goes to Lionel Goodwin that was an incredible tackle he had another beautiful spin move but somehow got brought down so that's going to be a third and five and I'm going to try a play that almost certainly won't work it's the halfback mid screen I have pretty much never seen it work but there it is RJ Rivera coming down with it going towards the corner into the end zone 23-yard touchdown reception for the running back. I guess you just have to wait a really long time to almost get sacked. Uh, that was awesome. That was a lot of fun. And then the great move to give the little shimmy shake and find the corner. 
That was seven plays, 72 yards. The problem with that drive is that it only took two minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. So Nebraska, although it's all very unlikely, still has some time to work with. It'll be a five wide set for these guys, likely for the remainder of the game as over the middle. I was a little bit late to react, so we give up 15 yards. I'm going to be using somebody uh, out in the man coverage just to give Nebraska maybe a fair shot as this one's over the middle and dropped. Oh, that's brutal. Since we can kind of expect them just to be passing the ball, we are going to cut them out. <clears throat> Since we can pretty much just expect them to be passing the ball, we're going to come out in our dime package and see if that can do anything to slow them down as Avery Binkley got burned. Really just trying to slow them down, I guess, is the main thing. This one's almost picked off by Green. He had one last game. That might have been a pick six if he could have held on to it. I don't know what that play was, a rub route or a screen or what, but it obviously didn't work as well as they were hoping. And now we're using Pope. Oh, I got torched on the whip route, but I wasn't alone. I think uh, Logan or London was there getting beat on a whip route on the opposite side. That really doesn't surprise me, but uh, that's just the way it works. They're going to have somebody wide open over the middle. It's me getting burned, but we tackle him, force the fumble, and Moore picks it up. Moore's got some space. He gets a block, and Moore off to the races. It's going to be a scoop and score touchdown to make things worse for the Cornhuskers with a minute and 24 left in the game. Mike Moore, an opportune time. Good hands on that one. How about the big hit to jar that ball loose, though? We've been trying to pop it loose all game. It finally happens, and that's going to be the dagger for Nebraska. It's just really unfortunate that they had that happen right there. They were kind of moving the football. Um, we were maybe doing a little bit of bend, but don't break. But uh, here we are, 28-3, to pouring it on at the end. Well, with their season and a playoff berth at the line, I certainly am not going to be upset if they just continue to pass for the rest of this time. And it's going to be a screen caught. Allen can't get the tackle. Stover just obliterated John King, but he held on to the ball. My guy just did a full flip. I don't, <laughs> if I got hit like that, I would not continue to play football. <laughs> Second and four, they're going to hand it off and get nothing. It looked like maybe some sort of mid-draw, and they are 0 for 8 on their third down conversions. That is brutal. Let's use our Smith. Let's make it 0 for 9. There's the sack on the QB. Oh, that that hurts. They're taking their timeouts. But in the middle of taking their timeouts, uh, they're also bringing out the pump formation. 54 seconds. I, I don't know. Maybe they want us to score. They want it to not look as bad as it could have been. I must have been at a field goal formation. Sims is there to pick it up, though. <laughs> I'm glad I sent somebody back to return. But that was just kind of a weird play. We're going to run one more read option in this game. I want a few more yards for the stat books or... Oh, gosh. I thought Maurice had a chance just to break it free there. That gets us to midfield. And now we can come out in the victory formation and take a knee. And we can come out as the Big Ten champions with a 28-3 victory over Nebraska. It was a close game heading into the locker rooms, but the defense figured it out. And Maurice Tate got it going. He looks uh, real excited there. Play of the game. Yeah, the scoop and score touchdown. I could see it. I don't know who our player of the game is. It might be Maurice. Might be RJ Rivera. But, uh, you know, the defense, they held. We gave up some really big plays, but to only give up three uh, yards or three points after all the broken tackles that Nebraska had, I think that's pretty spectacular. But that's going to punch our ticket into the playoffs. Uh, I already know that there's going to be quite a few upsets. So I'm really curious to see what our playoff bracket is going to look like. RJ Rivera does get our player of the game honor, uh, but we can just go ahead and lift up the trophy. Feeling good about that win. Feeling good about the season, but this is where it all starts. We play all 13 of those games just to get into the playoffs, and now we got to get it done in the postseason. Well, at the end of that one, certainly, uh, I don't know, an interesting game. Our tackling was were very interesting. Seemed like it came out of nowhere. Uh, Nebraska just a very strong team we gave up 130 rushing yards which is a ton for us 102 through the air we did create a turnover we did control the football ourselves didn't get rid of it 
Uh, didn't have a whole lot of offense, but we didn't need to. Our special teams did a decent amount, and our defense did a decent amount. So at the end of it, it looks pretty good. Again, RJ is our offensive player of the game. 14 carries for 81 yards and a touchdown with five receptions and 49 yards for a touchdown. And then Leon Logan had two sacks on the game with eight tackles total. So decent game for him. We can go ahead and add that Big Ten Championship into our trophy case, but we are going to wait to see the results of the rest of the conference championship games uh, and wait to see what the playoff bracket looks like until next time. So unfortunately, that is going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Down in the comments, I'm curious uh, to know how many tackles you guys think they broke that game. It's got to be upwards of a dozen. Uh, it was just tackle after tackle after tackle. And there was nothing the defense could do in that first half to stop them. After you're done with that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord, as well as the College Football Revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Gray Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our TU3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.